Hello, beautiful people. Today we're going to talk about all of the different methods that fall below the blanket term of fertility awareness as birth control. Um, and I'm doing this because I want you to see that just like with hormonal birth control, there are so many forms of non-hormonal fertility awareness methods. <laughs> and I don't want to say non-hormonal because there's, you know, like condoms, diaphragms, copper IUDs, but we're not going to talk about those today. So I've gone through and I've compiled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven methods, if you will, as well as four other methods that are no-nos, that are no-goes, that almost shouldn't even, they don't even fall in the same category in my mind. They're old methods or just, they just don't work. And I don't want people to think those are relevant or in the same, same stratosphere as these other glorious things. And I also want you to know that there's something that works for you. So let's start off the t at the top. At the tippity tippity top. The first one we're gonna talk about is the Billings ovulation method, also known as the ovulation method. And I like to think of this one as the cervical fluid method because all you track is your cervical fluid. I know a woman specifically right off the bat when I got interested in learning how to chart my cycles and getting off of hormone birth control. This lady is a friend of my mom's and I found out through my mom that she actually used this method. So she's been using it throughout the entirety of her marriage successfully without any problems and it's been working perfectly okay for her. So this is the Billings ovulation method. Um, it's named after the two doctors, Evelyn and Don Billings, who studied the changes in cervical mucus, and it has been successful around the world, even among women with no formal education. I think that is so important there because I think there's this misconception that you have to be very well educated, um, very intelligent to use these methods, but I think it is so ingrained in who you are as a film, female that all you need is a desire to learn and it is something that ladies with no formal education can be doing. I'm gonna read a little quote here. I'm gonna look down this way. A World Health Organization survey in five countries showed that 95% of women were able to return an interpretable chart of the changes in their cervical mucus by the end of their first cycle. And studies have found that women taught to use the ovulation method correctly have a 98 to 99% effectiveness rate. Okay, moving right along, we're gonna go into the Creighton model system, also known as CRMS. Let's switch down into a smaller word. Like I say, for truly wearing this method as FAM, F-A-M. So it's like the Billings ovulation method in that you chart the changes in your cervical mucus. But the thing with the Creighton model is it uses extremely precise and standardized descriptions of cervical fluid. Girl, I cannot talk today. Very precise and standardized descriptions of cervical fluid. I don't know why I can't talk. So it's like the Billings ovulation method, but to another level, a stricter level. All right, moving right along. Um, these are in no particular order. This is just kind of how I grab them and put them into the notes. <laughs> is the temperature method, um, also known as BBT, basal body temperature method. So if you've watched any of my other videos talking about fertility awareness and charting and all that stuff, temperature really shows you two things. It shows you, it peaks after you have ovulated, so it shows you that you have ovulated, and it then again drops on the first day of your period, so it shows you the beginning of a new cycle. And I have a friend who uses the temperature method because she takes, like Claritin? I could be wrong. She takes something to do with allergies, that could disrupt disrupt her mucus patterns, so they're not a reliable source, so she relies on the temperature method, and it has been successful for her. Moving right along is the symptothermal method. I don't know why I really like this one. I feel like I like the combination of, so that we'll get into it. So the symptothermal method is kind of what it sounds like. It's a combination of temperature and cervical mucus. And I don't know why I like this one. This is the one I was taught and have done 
a lot of my research into. So this, I don't know, it disagrees with me. I like it. So let's move on to the Just Use method. This one's very well known, I feel like, in the U.S. I remember learning, hearing of it, I should say, relatively early on in my journey. But I really haven't spent much time digging into it and learning more about it. Um, but I know it is very similar to the Symptothermal method. It's a combination of methods but she considers um, body literacy as an important aspect of psychological as well as physical well-being for women. And I love that thought. I'm a big advocate of body literacy. So maybe I should look more into the justice method. She says it can be used for pregnancy prevention, pregnancy achievement, insight into health and general empowerment and self-knowledge. So it's a term used by Eileen Richman, but also it's a blanket term for all these methods. Okay, and then the last one I have on this list is natural fertility management. Um, so it is a combo of methods that was developed by Francesca Naish in the mid-70s. It is the fertility awareness methods of mucus temperature and secondary signs of fertility with research into spontaneous ovulation. Now, boys and girls, let's talk about methods that do not work that are commonly confused as under that blanket term of fertility awareness because they are so old and irrelevant because there's so much information that's come out since then. So the first one I wanna talk about, and I feel like I've talked about it before, is the dumb rhythm method. And the quote is, an obsolete method based on mathematical formula using past cycle lengths to predict future fertile phases. There are no fertility signs observed and do not use it. Let's move down. The standard days method is very similar to the rhythm method. Um, it's couples avoid unprotected sex in a woman's perceived fertile phases of day 8 to 19. Moving on, cycle beats. Um, I guess I didn't think that people thought these were a form of birth control. I think it's a cool way to kind of know where you are in your cycle, but it... So anyway, cycle beads is you have beads and it's kind of goes off of the same idea that, okay, so I have a 28 day cycle, a 26 day cycle, and you have different color beads for, you know, a couple red ones for your period, and then a couple more for your first phase, um, a black one or whatever for your ovulation day, and then for the rest of your cycle. I don't know what the colors are. I think they're different. Um, but I think this is a great gift for girls to kind of like show them the cycle of it and to kind of keep track of where you are, but you definitely don't be using this as a form of birth control. Um, yeah, you need to be tracking stuff, temperature, fluid. I've talked about it. The last one I found was the two day method, which is a simplified version of that Billings ovulation method. The very first one I talked about, talked about, but it has very lackadaisical rules and therefore it is much less effective do not use it okay that's a lot of stuff i just jammed in there today and it was probably really confusing so do not be afraid to ask your questions down below um i just kind of wanted to show you that they're like within this umbrella of fertility awareness methods that i talk about so frequently there are all these other little methods and you can find something that works for you and your body and yeah so that's that um, thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, I'll see ya. Bye!